so hello everybody and uh, welcome to another old gold club big match revisited i'm mikey burrows alongside me as ever is north lanarkshire's sexiest man alive for 17 years in a row mr chris <laughs> awellamo good afternoon mate how are we i'm very good pal how are you coping in lockdown at the minute yeah doing okay doing okay there's been a a few testing moments with the with the fiance but uh we're uh, we're getting there we're getting there but it's uh in the little hot tub last night uh, oh well, hello yeah yeah it's just a nice little relax you know I, I put up some lights for her yesterday so got a couple of brownie points and oh. uh yeah it was a nice relaxing night felt it this morning in my morning run oh i don't know what you felt this morning when you run yeah goodness me so, mate I, i've lost my hamstring it's oh let's just say i'm in a little bit of pain but uh it's all good it's all good looking forward to this one well this is a a, a kind of a proper proper classic game from the last 20 years really this is Wolverhampton Wanderers back in the Premier League for the first time in 19 years back in the top flight for the first time in 19 odd, odd years it is uh, there was a premiership it was called back then this is proper old school yeah. in recent terms Dave Jones the man in charge had got them promoted via the playoffs but this is now a difficult start to the season it hasn't gone particularly well they got a bit of a thumping at Blackburn on the opening day 5-1 they lost 4-0 at home to Charlton in the first home game they lost to Man United away only narrowly drawn at home to Portsmouth lost at Southampton got thumped by Chelsea at home 5-0 and then beat Man City at home in the last home game before this against a fellow newly promoted team in Leicester who have got some experienced key players in it that we'll get to in a little while but I th this is a fascinating setup for this game yeah you know I think if you look at any probably coaching set up manager the staff to look at the, the teams that come up and that's the ones where you look at it and think you know what we have to pick up three points here you know they're, they're not gimmies you know that they're going to be fought hard hard for but when you look at it, you think, right, OK, we've been promoted, newly promoted as well. That's where we need to be picking up three points. And then you're looking at... Because you, you kind of break the league up into little little kind of competitions, little groups, uh, and try and pick up points as you go on. Obviously, you're not going to win all the games that you that you think, and you're going to win games that you don't think that you would have. Uh, but sometimes it, it doesn't go your way, you know. So I think this is definitely one of the matches that, that, that Dave Jones and that would have thought, right, it's important that we take three points here, but with the start, and like you say, they've got some experienced Premier League players, uh, Premiership players at the time, uh, and and there that that have that have been there, done it, bought the t-shirt and uh, wrote the book, you know. So it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it was good, definitely an interesting challenge. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those where, look, I mean, this Wolves team, they. There was big hopes. Dave Jones had massive hopes as to what he was going to be able to spend. It didn't work out like that. We've seen already Jody Craddock had come in, experienced head. He'd been at Sunderland. You, we've spoken to him on the old Gold Club. But the, the level of signing wasn't really there. No, apart from Oni Kamara, we've just seen chasing something down. And even he yeah. takes a long while to really settle. There just isn't really. I mean, this is this isn't even as strong as the team that got promoted the season before looms. Yeah, you know, and, and and that's difficult. But still, the players, the you know, it was a good group. You know, it did have some experience head there as well. They all put they either put expectations on, on themselves, but you need to have those signings coming in because it does it just kind of galvanizes the group as well. So, with the experienced characters that they have in that group, and we'll, we'll, we'll get a few on, of course. It'll be quite interesting how 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 to motivate because every day of pre-season, as difficult as it was, you're preparing for that first that first Premiership game, uh, and you want new faces coming in because you're thinking, you know what, we're in, we're going to give us a proper go this year, and that never really materialised as, as as much as Dave Jones was promised money, it never really came down to that, didn't it? So it was uh, that was a disappointing fact, but still, it was. Uh, 
it was a disappointing start to the the, the premier the premiership campaign. But you you know what, you've got to start somewhere, and this that, this game's iconic for, for 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 certain for certain reasons. So it's definitely an exciting one. So Michael Oakes is in goal because of course Matt Murray had picked up an injury. Uh, Matty is on the bench in this game. He was trying to make a little bit of a comeback, but he's. I was speaking to him about this before we did the recording, and he kind of said that he wasn't really right, and he's he kind of blames the injury that he picked up before this for kind of ruining his career really that he wasn't right to come back but he sat on the bench for a couple of games to try and help out um yeah there's no Paul Ince today Danny Serwin is playing he must have been at least 38 I think at this point if not slightly yeah, older maybe yeah. he still puts in the, the mails you know I think it's some way he, I think it was Butts when we had Paul Butler on. Uh, he said that uh, Dennis Owen used to come out and start lashing balls, didn't he? Left, right, and centre, no matter the age. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was uh, definitely a kid at heart. Loved doing what he did, but just just a presence on the pitch. You knew what you were going to get. Steady, steady eight out of ten, man. Uh, and just the quality shone through in that experience as well. Oh, it was great block there. Great block. Well, um, say there's no Paul Ince in this team. Uh, there is, I'm just looking around on the bench Oleg Luzny was on the bench Stefan Everson was on the bench and there's another man we'll come to in a little bit who's on the bench who makes a, an appearance that I'd forgotten that he played in this season um, but there's no Mark Kennedy who would have been a big part of this team Yeah. obviously no Jolian Lescott who's out injured hence why um, Jody Craddock comes in so that's, a, that's some key players from the season before who are just not around in this. Yeah, and you know what? You know, I think if, if, if you don't if you don't kind of recruit properly or you've not got the money to recruit and then you lose players like Ince and Lescott and, you know, like there's there's some massive players, even though you've got a little bit of quality and depth there, having Jody Craddock uh, coming in as well, you know, I think uh, it is, it's, it's always going to be difficult you know, so it was one of those. I think it was kind of a bit of an uphill battle this this whole season, and I'm sure Dave Jones was putting fires out left, right, and centre, as well as some of those experienced players in the squad. But you know what? It's uh, it was yeah, and you know what? There's there's, there's quality there. You're looking at it now. You know, Leicester are probably in control of the match at the minute, but the players are working hard for each other. A few Colin Cameron in there, time on the ball, and he, he, he passes it out to play, and it's just having that experience, isn't it? Uh, uh, just kind of getting on the ball, playing the way, and believing in what the manager's telling you, you know. And it's and then when you lose vital players as well, that kind of that stops that kind of fluent flow as well. No matter no matter there's good experience oh, coming in. Oh. oh, here we go. Oh, is that is it off the off the post there? Was yeah, it? I think so. I saved his life in Magaluf. What? <laughs> yeah, crazy. He was. Uh, I think it was eighteen of us over there uh, at St Mirren at the time. I was only a young lad and. Uh, we'd obviously all been drinking, and I remember he was just—he was—he was a little bit under the, the influence, and he was just walking across the road, but he, he hadn't noticed the car coming. So you just—I just went and basically challenged them out of the way, and the, the cars just flew by. But he just picked himself up and and and, and walked on. I did remind him I played with his brother at Colchester, and I remember telling him the story. He couldn't believe it because all the Chelsea boys were in the same same hotel as us at the time. And uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah. So he would have, he'd have took a soul win anyway. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Such a random story. Unbelievable, isn't it? Um, but what a player he was. Got on nails. Yeah, get the nails on him. What about that? Eh? On the weights, you don't need to be like massive. Just good strength. And you know what? Something with nails as well that I notice every time he gets his head up. Can he? He looks forward. You know, straight away lose possession. He's he gets himself back into play. Defensively, responsibilities that he covers that. Why is Colin Cameron wearing the world's biggest pair of shorts? <laughs> Look at him on the bottom right. Yes, yeah, you, don't, you can't even see the knees, can you? It's just a little glimpse in it. <laughs> to be fair, and it, it, players are, you know, there's, there's certain players that I know that would always wear uh, very superstitious footballers, uh, sports things. They, they try and kind of repeat in, uh, the things. If they have a good game, they'll try and follow that through with doing the same things the following the following uh, uh, pre-match uh, so it is it wouldn't surprprise me if he's had a good game he's he's wore he's, he's had the wrong pair of shots put on his place 
he's put them on and then he's you just it just sticks with your little things like that just uh yeah, this is the era like the late 90s early 2000s kits are big they were perfect yeah, they were perfect for fans <laughs> his shorts are taking a bit of the mickey they'll make you a little bit too, too big some people you know? like it man some people liked it. it slows you down it's not you're not streamlining eh? you need it you need it all tight don't you no, I, see, I didn't. I didn't did mind as tight as I could get because I, you know, I, I never had any. I wasn't blessed with any pace whatsoever. Really sad to kind of streamline, <laughs> streamline the hell out of it, mate. Try and try and gain a yard here or there, <laughs> uh, mate. I've, I've, I know fans who are probably still wearing their replica shirts from this era because they've just there was so much given them that they've been very, um, shall we say, forgiving yeah. as they've got older and rounder. Keith Gillespie. Yeah, this is what he's great at, you know, one and one. Look at that. You're never gonna get round him and, and put the ball in. He's 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 always got his eye on the ball. Doesn't matter if there's how many touches, his eyes on the ball, focused, and he forces his Gillespie back there. So again, great one and one defender, but the, the difference with Nails as well is he had everything else when he when he had that composure to get the ball down, he'd always wanted to play. Very rarely did he just boom it, you know, he's a proper footballer, wasn't he? Well calm composed from Jody Craddock. Yeah, dick off as well. I remember he signed he signed me when he was manager at Oldham and got sacked the, the following day, so basically strange one. It's funny. Right. So what, he got sacked for for signing you. Yeah, near enough, no, we, we went to I think Walsall, first game. I think uh, me and uh Barnett we, we signed he signed from Reading and uh, we uh, we got beat against Walsall and he got sacked. So basically I just signed there from Watford on loan. But uh, again, just a good, good motivator. Great voice in the dressing room, as uh, as I'm sure just doesn't stop talking. The Scottish, the Scottish in him, I, I presume. Big towering header from Craddock again. See, this is the thing with, with Jody, the physicality. You know, I think he was he reads the game very well, and he wasn't he wasn't afraid to put his head where it hurts. You know, that's. I think he will tell you himself. He's taken. He's took a, fo- a few sore ones in the for the benefit. Of, oh, pick <laughs> yourself up! Is that Alex Ray? Yeah. Take that! <laughs> oh, there's a bit of history there. You know, Dick off and Alex Ray. Hundred percent history. Took him out the game. <laughs> what a challenge! Got the ball, but left one in as well. That's just the way Alex played, wasn't it? It's uh, hard as nails, wasn't it? Um, we've been talking about him. Let's welcome our first guest for this episode as Wolves go on the attack oh is that Henri Kamara it is and he's got to do better his pace gets him in behind one and one with the goalkeeper and you know what he does everything right does everything right goes low, low hard to the keeper's bottom it's a good save from Walker as well the arm is behind him a little bit more pace on that and he's beat Walker there so again it just shows you you know little moments in matches and I know uh, a lot of moments in matches if you don't take chances and that was against the run of play really it's all been Leicester well this is a Leicester corner looms uh, hello Jody Craddock by the way good afternoon um, I'm not sure you want to s- hear what's going to happen from this Muzzy is its corner I know what happens oh no big Les oh. so, see, see there Jody I'm, I'm looking at it right now you're, you're tight to your man, you were you were on him. You both yeah. went and challenged the ball. So defensively, I know that you'll be hard on yourself there. It was a great ball in. You think the it's actually goes over Jerry Taggart at the front for so that's something that they've worked at. So Jerry Taggart makes that space, but it's so important that you've got to be alert to that, isn't it? So are you disappointed there? Oh, I'm from very a, disappointed. You know, but that- why? From a defensive point of view, why? Because Ferdinand's always going to get the run on you. He's always going to get that yard. If the ball's perfect, defensively, you've got to basically man manhandle the man to, to get the first of you not. Well, you know, I don't know how you know how good Les Ferdinand is in the air. He's arguably the best at that time in the air. Um, so for me, yeah, I, I knew I had to get really tight to him. And when I actually jogged him, I didn't remember many things from the game, but I remember his goals going in. And I remember jumping and being as close as I possibly could be to him. Yeah. You know, in terms of win that header. And the ball was perfect, the ball was great. And I just and I just it kind of surprised me when he got that header and it and it went in because I thought I I you know generally thought I had him on my shoulder and, and I was there to win the win that ball but as we know it 
it went in the back of our own net. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't quite close enough or, you know, maybe I should have adopted a different tactic and just tried to, you know, block him and yeah. just put him off from even <clears throat> attempting to get that header. Maybe I should have done that, you know, in, in hindsight, how, you know, it's easy. How, how important is it, Jody? You know, there as well, you know, obviously it, was, it wasn't a great start to the season. You, you come in, uh, Julian Lescott's injured. You come in, you know, yep. you, you you keep yourself fit, you keep yourself in shape anyway. The match sharp, the, the match sharpness will be there. But going one nil down, okay, your man scored. How difficult is that? That that some people buckle. They, they, that you don't see them for the rest of the game. It's so important that you have to be mentally strong as well, isn't it? Oh, massively, massively. You know, I think that's how you know you get a. A long career, you've got a, the, the the low points. You've just got to get past them, and that's it. And if it, you know, what you want to say a low point, you know, they, they can be from making a mistake in the game. They can be from getting relegated. You know, they can go from small ones to massive ones. Um, I kind of adopted the mindset that you know, if I've, I've made a mistake, or you know, you as a centre half, you score own goals. If I score an own goal, I've got to try and switch off immediately and think, okay, well. You know, forget about that and just move on. Yeah, that's all you can do. I kind of, you know, as long as you get that mindset right, then you can deal with those those occasions that happen. And um, you know, yes, the manager might have a go at you at half time or at the end of the game, but that's just the nature of the beast. And uh, yeah, but if you want to continue to, you know, going one nil down, and then we all know what happens next when he gets another one. Um, yeah, it's funny though, Jody, because like, I mean, I've watched this game quite a few times actually. And the only two times that Ferdinand gets the run on you are the two goals. We've just watched you literally a minute ago beat him to a, a, the first cross that came in after the goal. Yeah. Like, it's it's that funny thing of football sometimes that the perfection of just those two moments, otherwise 89 minutes for the rest of the game, you add him. Yeah, but, you know, that you can't take anything away. They were great headers and, and perfect balls. And if you're a centre-forward... Looms will tell you, you, you know, if that ball's perfect, you just, you know, that's half the work he's done for you. You know, yes, he's, he's done. He's a great header. He's doing to out jump the defender, but that ball's good and it's and it's moving up, just slightly moving away from the defender. It's really hard for me to kind of to get uh, to it. Two nil. Oh, was it a header by any chance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The thing, the, the thing about it as well, Jody, like. There's so much work put into these corners. Like, you know, I think obviously it's uh Muzi, is it, that's that's putting the corners in. Yeah. Uh, and it's like you see that you see the run, you know, that the space is all there. And yeah. it's like Oh it's someone it's, whacked it's you been, in the face as well, well Jody. Yeah, oh. you've you've come in it's you quite know what, a on that as well. My head was probably up my ass, so it didn't really matter at that point. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. so they are so can I can I ask then, Joe? Do you know, like when, 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 when obviously Alex Ray's having a proper pop at you there. You know, is yeah. that is that something that you just got? To, you just got. You know, you know yourself. You know yourself. I've got. I should. I, I should do better. I've got to do better there. Yeah. Is it something that you do? You acknowledge Alex Ray, or do you have a little pop back? Or I know. I know. I already know what the answer is going to be, but no, no, not a lot of people will know. I just. I will just take it on the chin and accept it. I'm thinking, yeah, I should have stopped. That stopped it. So whatever Alex wants to say to me is absolutely fine. You you go for it, and then uh, you know I'll take it on board. And and it, you know I've already got it in my head that. It's already not to me. It's yeah. already disappointed me. I'm thinking, right, just get past this. You know, it was it was a shock that you know once, yes, twice. It's like, come on, you know. It, we're just watching a replay of it. Up. I I think it because of Ferdinand's initial movement, and you've moved back in front of him. It, you're kind of on the back foot when he then makes the move to the near post. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, he's running for he's running forward. You know, goals I've scored at times are running towards the ball and then you flick them you flick them far post um, so they're really hard to defend because you know I don't know where he's going to run he can check and pull in and, and you know he can go anywhere I've got yeah. to but you know, this, you know that's why I was quite I was that felt that I was tight to him I just you know he obviously they have that knowledge and that perfect ball and he knows where he's going so they already have that step ahead of me that that's where that ball's going to go um you know another day i might have won it but i didn't and uh, that's how it goes also, that's football isn't it you know that's that's how it goes feisty old place molling you when you're in this kind of situation as well the sound yeah. you can hear it oh yeah 
Well, it's, yeah, it's disappointing, isn't it? You know, the, the it's disappointing for the fans. Oh, another goal. Oh, you know. And then by that time, it's half time, it's 3 0, and you kind of think, oh, God, there's no way back from this. Can I, can I ask, you know, Dave Jones, obviously you have a, a certain way of playing. What what I've seen so far, you go quite direct to Blake. Is that something David Jones said? Look, let's let's go go play long ball, pick up the second ball in the final third, and then we'll play our football from there. Or is this just something that a little bit of pressure on is the easy thing to do is to go long or or, or not really, Jude? You know what? Well, that's probably it, Chris. You know, um, you know, a bit of pressure on you, kind of thinking, oh, let's just get the ball forward and see if we can, uh, you know, do something in their half. You know, it's, as as far down as grassroots kids football sometimes you just like just let's get the ball in their half and see if we can put yeah. some pressure onto them because by putting the pressure onto them it kind of changes the balance of the game you know you don't the more that ball is in your half and near your box then the more pressure is on your team so uh, you know the, yeah get the ball in their half a bit and maybe change that balance and uh Second half, fantastic. First half, not so good. Jody, what's this team lacking? Because, I mean, I'm looking at it. It's got Kenny Miller and Honoré Kamara either side of Nathan Blake, who's a strong target man. Got Ray and Cameron in midfield. Joey Goodjonson's a pretty young player who keeps fancying digs from distance for some yeah. reason. <laughs> um, like, what are they lacking at this point? Um, what are they lacking... Maybe they lack in a Traore down that wing that can go like a rocket and that can really get you out of trouble sometimes. Maybe they're lacking that, you know. Just that, it's, cool? tough, it's tough sometimes to really kind of put your finger on things. You know, you can take the best of teams. I'm not saying we're the best of teams. You can take the best of teams and just sometimes it doesn't work. And, uh, yeah, I, I think, don't know. Mate. I think, I think what Mike, Mike is alluding to is like, you know, like with the players in the squad, you know, the individuals there, it's, it, is, it is a strong squad. So, but how important is it, Jody, like confidence, you know, winning games just it breeds confidence and you see this, you see that a team that they, they, they're doing things that, that you would expect them to do. But when it's going against you, it's just a little bit harder. You know, you, yeah. you can't reach those levels. And that that's something that, it, you okay, you might say it's a mental thing, but it does affect you physically as well, doesn't it? Yeah, massively. It is definitely a mental thing. And uh, when you have loads and loads of confidence and you're up there and, you know, you're beating teams, you do things without you know without thinking you know you bring the ball out of the box you know when yeah. there's no confidence or the confidence is is lower than what it should be then those things that you you can do as a player you don't do because you're concerned that you may make that mistake and cause that extra pressure onto the team um so yeah you know confidence is a massive thing on all from all levels you know the more confidence they have the more more you know the fluidity there is in the team and the consistency yeah. that's that's how it is that's the nature of the beast that it will always be that yeah you can never be able to change that are you guys lacking a bit in confidence from this because i was saying to looms earlier that hang on keith gillespie's on the charge here oh there's jody tidying things up um that you've not got mark kennedy and you've not got paul ince and you've not got jody and lescott at this at this point in the season you know, we didn't have Joel anyway from the start of the season. Um, so, you know, he was a quality, quality player. So that was a definite miss. Um, you know, Mark Kennedy, he was, a, he was a good, very good player. Sweet left foot. So he was a miss. So he, I don't know what game he came back, but, you know, he's a good player. He didn't see, I know he was towards the end of his career. So, not you know, Cam... Uh, Colin Cameron in there and Alex Ray, you know, I'd back them too against any any pair and they were just solid, hard working, tough tackling <laughs> midfielders. So, you know, them two in there were, were great, great players anyway. So, you know, Cam he's got two two goals in this game. Oh and Alex, Alex Ray, there you go. It, it, you know, back to my point up, we had two midfielders scoring goals in the game. So um yeah, I know. But yes, you know, it, it can work like that if, if you are missing a couple of key players. Yes, it does. It can affect the balance and the makeup of the team. Jerry Good Johnson got pulled after 21 minutes. Early doors, isn't it? <laughs> you don't want to be subbed early doors. It's just one of those. So it's like, what, what, what? As a manager, when you look at Newton and it coming on there, you know what he's, you know what you're going to get. Is that something that? Because I wouldn't say like Joey Good Johnson. He's not really affected the match. He's not really kind of implemented 
anything onto the match rather than having a shot from about 40 yards probably on yeah. three occasions so far <laughs> so is that something that no but as, as a manager you have to be ruthless Jody don't you you have yeah, to say you know what yeah, yeah. Uh, 26 minutes in that's it he's, he's pro- 25 minutes in he's, you, you make the change you're 2-0 down you have to do something that's going to affect the match hopefully in a positive way no you is do. that yeah, I totally agree. You you have to. There's no doubt about it. If you've got a player that's had three shots from long range and they've, they've done nothing, you yeah. know, then you kind of you as a manager, you're going to be frustrated. If you have a player that has three shots that uh, you know test the keep or just but you know just miss the target, you kind of think, okay, well, one of these is going to hit the target at some point. So um, yeah. you know, manager's frustration is probably thinking, come on, you've had three shots now and you've done nothing with them. Yeah, I need to change it. You what know. was he like, Jerry Goodjohnson? He was a quiet lad, just a nice lad, quiet lad. Um, just kind of got on with this thing. Because he, I think he had a bit of a reputation, didn't he? Because when he was on loan at Villa in, uh, I think the season before this, I think he got sent off in a Midlands derby, and he kind of, when he came, like people thought he was a bit of a nutter. I don't know. I never, I never got that feeling from it. You know. It was, it's not someone that stands out that uh, is a bit of a nutter. You know, you take, you take an Alex Ran, you I think, well, I remember him from being, you know, a bit of a nutter was... in the sense that he was <laughs> uh, hard as nails type thing. Uh, yeah, Joey, Joey was a bit of a, he was a bit of a, a hard man. His dad was, his dad sent me at, for Stoke, uh, uh, and he's obviously beyond the good Johnson as well. I played with at Stoke, but Joey was, uh, yeah, he, he was a good player. But yeah, he, he could see, he could see red. You know, it's always the quiet ones, Jody. You know, I think uh, when Mister Craddock was angry, you made sure that you stayed out of his way. You know, especially when he's sharpening his studs before before training, when it's like pre-season and it's like concrete. I just couldn't, couldn't believe that you're wearing studs, and then you'd come out with, yeah, but I've got to wear them at the match. Break yep, them in, see. break them in, break, break them in October, November, you know, you know, when the ground's a little bit soft, wasn't having any of it, Mikey, you know, it's crazy, <laughs> I just made I sure months. that I, yeah, what's that, I but you don't wear, Jody, you don't wear, you don't wear uh, studs the first couple of days of pre-season when the, the ball first comes out, that's a proper schoolboy, mate, pick up, I know it's like, you, <laughs> you, you know what I mean, Blister, blistering hell, they say. Yeah, but, but my, my, my studs were so comfortable that I wouldn't get blisters in them. If I got blisters, I, w- I wouldn't wear them, but they were so comfortable, I, d- I didn't get blisters. And I kind of felt that, you know, when I'm marking a centre forward, even in training or whatever it is, I, I need a stud. I don't need a crappy mould which make, makes me slip every time I turn. I need a stud that's going to grip in the ground, and um, you know I'd wear them in, and they would be so comfortable that I wouldn't get, you know, I wouldn't get, um, I wouldn't get blisters. And then then your new ones had carbon fibre bottoms to them, and so they yeah. just wouldn't get blisters anyway. So yeah. you know it was a no-brainer for me. Jody, well, I've forgotten you... by the way. Sorry, Looms. I've forgotten um, just how much they played through you at this point. Like every every attack, it Butler gets it and gives it immediately to you. Dennis plays it back into you. You're the you're the playmaker at this point. What's the score at this point? Uh, two 0 down. Yeah, I didn't make much <laughs> playing, did I? <laughs> <laughs> but was that part of the the setup? It was like you're the one expected to get it moving because you can play with it on the deck. Oh, not particular. Not that. that. No, not particularly. I, don't, it's, I suppose sometimes in games, it's just the, the way it evolves. Maybe I don't, you know, I haven't watched the game back myself and analysed it. Um, just maybe I had more space, and, and so hence I got more of the ball. You know, you just yeah, try but... and show for the ball and, and try and make yourself available. You know, as a flat centre half, you know when a centre, a centre midfielder gets it, I know what position I need to be in yeah. to help them. I know what position I need to be in when my fullback gets it to help them, or when the goalkeeper gets it. So. You know, you always take up those positions anyway, you know, to receive the ball. And if you receive it, you you know, you kind of know what you're doing with it next. And if you don't, then, then maybe the other centre after it. So you're always kind of getting in those positions. And I'm sure Butts would have been still getting those positions as well. But, you know, as the game progresses, it's maybe I was more available at that time. It says a lot about you as well, Jody. You know, I think it's, uh, as Mikey said, like Ferdinand never really done much else you kind of had them in your pocket really but those two chances that that presented themselves he put away and that's what makes him the, the, the striker that he is but you still going about business professional making sure that you're you're defending you're getting back you're you're, you're yeah no it's, it's a great little header great ball in he's not happy or one is he Denny he's Sir, a look around yeah Gillespie puts a ball in 
fires it across, and it's a great header, great defensive header there from Urban. As you see, he must have been so good to play alongside. Yeah, he was quality. He was you know was at the, the latter end of his career, but he was still a. You could see, you know, why he'd done so well in the game and how he passed the ball and just his influence and his experience and uh, you know it was a bonus to all you know us young, younger lads. Um, so yeah, then it was a, a privilege to play alongside Dennis. How, how important how important is it to have characters like that and players of that ilk you know you know that's experienced been there and done it no matter the age no matter that they're probably coming to the 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 the, 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 the end of their career it's important to have characters like that and, and players with that experience Jody, isn't it it is because you know when stuff you know when times are difficult and you are losing games or, or losing a game um, you're kind of looking towards those players to you know just keep their heads calm and you know and, and kind of drag you through pull you through and uh, you kind of try and learn from that and they lead by example so you know they keep a calm head and bring the ball out when you need them to and instead of panicking and kicking it you know you rely on those players to to continue to do that you know they've been in them situations numerous times and now to deal with it and know how to handle that pressure of, of losing the game and uh, you know and then trying to turn it around Jody talking of calm heads one of the calmest around because nothing much phases him hello Lee Naylor <laughs> hello can you hear me mate we're watching this Leicester game you won't I know for a fact you won't remember much of this game at all right tell, tell, tell Jody to get up with you we led <laughs> Uh, I put, I did some thing the other day, and I put nails in my top eleven team. I might just have to take him out. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I, I, I just remember half-time talk, and oh my life! Oh, it was fun. I don't, you know what? I don't remember the half-time talk. <laughs> and like, oh, no, yeah, I probably, you have, I, yeah, no, you don't want to remember it, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to let us know, Niels. You'll have to, you'll have to tell us what it was. Yeah, no, it was, it was a great game. It was a great game. Like, I, obviously, I didn't remember it until I watched it back. But all I do remember, like beforehand, was the the feeling after the game. Feeling yeah. after the game was sensational. It was one of the best feelings, definitely, I've had in football. When you're in that dressing room, boys, like, is Dave Jones a shouter, or is it quiet in there? What's going on? If Ian, I never really remember him for being a shouter. Not like a Peter Reid shouter. You know, Peter Reid was a shouter and a cup thrower and a you know teapot smasher. But <laughs> Dave Jones wasn't like that. Um, not that I remember anyway. <laughs> no, no, he wasn't. He was. He'd have a moan like, but he, he weren't. He but, weren't a shouter. You know, for me at home, no person got my job is to stop that. Go on, else. Say again, mate. Sorry, mate. I was just saying, so, so, you know, Dave Jones, I don't think he was a shelter, but, you know, as a player, my, I know I've made mistakes. First half, my player scored two goals, you know, so it doesn't really matter what he says to me. I kind of know what I've, you know, I know where it's gone. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, you as the sort of player that, you, the same as me, I think. Where you, Wrong myself, personally. No one, you, two. Yeah. Yes, give everybody... Right. Um, we will let you go, Jody. Thank you very much for your time. We know it's going to get better in this game and the season gets better and your Wolves career certainly lasts an awful lot longer after this. So you must have done something right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I think he did I think everything I improved right. when they got rid of nails. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only jo joking. Jody, look after yourself, my friend. Have a good one, Jody. Cheers, guys. See you later, Jody. Jody Craddock, what a guy he was. Um, Nails, I know you've had to watch this game back because you are famous from a lot of people for not remembering any of the game that you've played in. <laughs> Correct. What did you What did you think yeah. of your performance, Nails? You know what? I was watching it back and I was frustrated with myself. Oh, really? I'm impressed so far. Like you're doing one and one Gillespie, you've 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 he's 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 not getting round you. Defensively you're doing your job. Every time you get the ball you're looking to play. What were you frustrated with? I think we've lost him a minute. We'll uh, we'll get him he's, back. 
he's just a harsh critic. We all are. You know what I mean? He's, he's sitting there saying that he was frustrated with himself at the minute. Everything that he's doing, he's, he's he's doing right. You know, he's making the right decision. You know, I think uh, even even the corner that that, that that was the the first goal, it wasn't it wasn't Lee Naylor's challenge that, that 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 created the corner anyway. You know, so again, it's uh, from a full back, you want him getting on the ball. He's doing that, winning his headers. But def- when the ball's on the floor, he's he's he's, he's playing right. But here it's like you look at it now, playing out from the back, Butts and, and, and Craddock always getting on the ball. That's what you want. You know, it's Urban there, he's got options going forwards, firing it in. Uh, Blake's keeping, um, uh, it's sticking with him. Ah, it's got to be better that it's just bounced away from, from Kenny Hello. Miller as well. Hey, here he is. Here he is. Don't know I was what asking, happened. yeah, I was saying, Nils, I was saying that uh, I've watched it so far and you're, you're ticking all boxes for me. So, what what was it that frustrated your, yourself about your own performance then? Just, just, uh... There's a few times. There's a well, there's five or six times where there's an, there's an easier pass on, and I've not seen it. I've ignored it, and I, I, I just I, things like that. I get frustrated. That just frustrates the life out of me. <laughs> Were you always like that, though? Were you like, are you your harshest critic? Oh yeah. I mean, I think you have to be, because uh, if you're not putting that pressure on yourself. Um, then you don't want you. You're not really wanting to get better. See, see, in this match, Niels, you know, like obviously you're two 0 down. Uh, how important is it? Do you are you one that has a goal at the players around you, or do you just focus solely on it's on your own goal. job? Yeah, I, I just think it's the game. The first off is the so scrappy because I, I don't think they're on top. I don't think we're on top. I just think it's a scrappy, scrappy game, and they've they've just gone and took. Chances from nothing really. Yeah. Um, and so when you oh, when you're down three nil. Yeah, when you're down three nil and you're like, what on earth has that happened? Uh, well, well, I mean the know, first two are set pieces. Set pieces, yeah. But this is what I mean, and it was a bit sloppy. So like, when when I'm, when I'm looking it back, like people are people's first touch is is just everyone was off it. Like for me, off it. Apart from my ball down the, down the line to Armory Kamara, that put him in for the one v one, and he went to me. <laughs> he's got, he's got to do. He has got to do better there, though, hasn't he? It's a great ball. Oh, in. mate, come on, assist that that's your it, life. That's it, nil. That's it, nil. That's it, nil, nil as well. Nil. Oh, no. Could be a... There you go. That, well, then it wouldn't have made the game what it was. No, exactly, exactly yeah, that. I'm, I'm glad he missed. Um, no, it's it's one of them where I just thought he was oh, so nails just pushing Les Ferdinand off like he was nothing. Oh, did you did you see that? <laughs> well, you definitely did. You've got the minute. I bet you wrote the minute down as well, so make sure that we seen it as well. Had you been in the gym Mate, you know over what? summer? People, people, people don't understand. They might look at the frame and go, "Yeah, I can deal with nails. Don't worry about that." People used to get fooled by the framework. I've told people many a time, <laughs> don't be fooled by the framework. I've already said it, Niels. I've already said it. You've already wasted a couple, to be fair. <laughs> I've already said it, mate. Yeah, it's, uh, nah, it's, it's, it's one of them where I was just... I just tried to compete for everything at the end of the day. Everything... But everything even... even even now in this match, three 0 down. What we got? We're on. Uh, we're on forty minutes. So what? That's probably what six minutes to go, seven minutes to go to half yeah. time. Even now, a game that you just said scrappy as they've took their chances. Not really. Yeah. Not really. It's sometimes you see players that just throw the towel in. That's it. They're yeah. done. You won't see them now. It's game over. Not one. Obviously, the result shows that this that that wasn't the case. Or is it something that Dave Jones, by the no, reaction I at half time. No, I just think that we, I just thought we were that bad in terms of our touch, our passing, just everything about us. We, we were just totally off it. And then because change is obviously a half time. Yeah. Uh, and how we started the second half was, was why we got the result. The result, yeah. Uh, and and because uh, obviously watching the first five minutes of the first, uh, the second half, we were we were all over it. Every yeah. every first ball, uh, winning second balls, just fighting fighting for lost causes. Literally, 
everything. Uh, Sounds like someone's watch. fighting in the background there. <laughs> yeah, like my dog's watching TV, and when he sees a dog on the on, on the telly, that's him, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, is it down to the players? What What were the players like with each other going in there at half time? Then, oh, Neil's, because some. It, yeah, you look at the players we've got in the dressing room. It's, it's yeah. you know that you know they self manage. So yeah. Um, Nails, are you in number order? So are you sat ne- in between Dennis Owen and Alex Ray at this point, or are you separate? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm always sitting in a spot. Yeah, I thought that's, that's the only spot I ever sat in in the, in the first team dressing room. Yeah. Well, I just wondered whether it went in like numerical order, or whether because your squad numbers you're all over. Because I would hate to have been next to Alex no, Ray. No, numerical. At this point. Yeah, numerical order all the way around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <that's> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, but it's, everyone's. It's not like anyone shied away from saying something to each other. Is it was even like me to one of the older pros. He was, he was one of them. It was you demanded from everyone. You wanted to, you wanted to win. If you, you've got to be a winner. You've got to be a winner yeah. at the top. Um, so yeah, we, everyone was. We came in, said we need to be better at some things. Uh, obviously, set pieces. That was all of us, um, and. I think we did that. I think I think we did that. I remember getting it. Was, did I get a kick in the first half? Yeah, I got kicked in the first half from a set piece. I'm sure I did. Um, I stayed down for about two or three minutes to get my breath. Um, Nils, Nils, the players look at these matches. You know, obviously Leicester newly promoted as well, and they they think you know what we've got to take three points here because it wasn't a great start to the campaign. Obviously, you've you've obviously been. Uh, I think the game before this, did you say it was was it five nil Chelsea, Mikey? Yeah. So the confidence is low, isn't it? But you look at Matt, you look at the teams that got promoted with, and you think, right, okay, this this can be the start of something if we get a win. But yeah. we're forty minutes in or forty three minutes in, and it's three nil down to a newly promoted team, and yeah, they've got some experienced heads just as we have. But still, yeah. like you say, yeah. it's a very scrappy. I've not they've not opened you up with sheer quality no, and unstoppable no, goals. It was just in- errors, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was just sloppy, sloppy on our on our part, and that's why I think. Coming out the way we did in the second half. Oh, Henri Kamara. He's the, oh. the reason why we got got that result. I mean, it's uh, yeah, yeah, the start we had to that season was horrific. And I've, I've said before when I came on on the show that um, we, we just didn't prepare. Yeah. Um, signings as well. You want you want you Sign, want some yeah. big signings coming in, don't you? So, signings, a lot of injuries. Yeah. Um, and I just think that, you know, it, it took us a while to get going uh, at all in, in the Prem. Nails, um, did you go, did the team go, or did Dave Jones go away from what had made you successful the year before? Because we did the no, full like. You can get through it. You can get through it. With, you can get through the Championship with, with the quality we had in, in terms of. Uh, yeah, the quality and. But you were like a solid four-four-two team in that promotion season, and then I'm watching it now, and it's like it's much more four-three-three here. Yeah, but that was because of personnel and and whatnot that he brought into the club and uh, trying to make us a bit more compact because it's the Premier League. But at the same time, you can't you can't be that loose as uh, yeah. in the champ in the Premiership as you are in the in the Championship. You, you just can't. You can, you get away with a few in the champ. Everyone knows that in the Prem you don't get away with nothing. Um, so we, you know, we we had that experience in the Championship to get us through. At the end of the day, um, it's, it's, I actually watched that back the other day for the first time. The whole season that was that was that was as uh, that was interesting. The promotion year. Yeah. Yeah, we've done it as a season re-review. Um, it's another uh, kind of bit of content that I we're putting out. That many games. Oh mate, it's a, it's like it's a bizarre season, isn't it? Because you yeah. like it wasn't great for the first part of it, and yet yeah, it was it was it was weird. To be fair, it was weird, yeah. but it's uh it was good to watch back. It was really good to watch back. But no, obviously this season, the the Premiership season was, and especially that game. Like, mate, that game is amazing. Honestly, the feeling <laughs> after that game. Neil, you said you said how how you started the second half. Uh, yeah, was was the reason why that we they, they got the result? Why 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 didn't they start the game like that then? Is it just I don't complacency? Know. I, think, I think we I think we had all the intentions too. I think you, I think you, you know 
as a footballer, sometimes you, you, you're trying, and this, but it's not coming off. It was yeah. one of them where it just it, it happens in football. It just happens that there was there was effort there. There was people making the runs, but the quality wasn't there. Yeah. Um, and that's that's all it was in 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 the in the first half. The quality wasn't there. Whether it would be your first touch, whether it be getting after second balls, uh, might even a little bit of luck. Um, uh, it just wasn't there in the first half. Uh, and I think because of the hard work put in in the second half and how we started and we were out the trap straight away, it set the tone. It set the tone for for to go on and win the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nails, say hello, say hello to Kenny to Miller. Kenny Miller. <laughs> 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 All right, Nails. What's going on, mate? What's happening, lad? What's going on? You done your 5K one or what? I done that yesterday, mate, on fire. <laughs> mate, that's a ridiculous <laughs> one as well, by the way. Yeah, it's hard. It's not my type of running that. Anything over 10 metres is too long for me. Yeah, mate, that's, <laughs> mate, that's, that's <laughs> mad, mate. Del, del. It's what's going on anyway, mate? You, uh, is that, is that, have you looked at you earned anything back from the A League? Nah, mate, not yet. We're uh, just the same as everybody waiting to hear the the next steps. Uh, there's, there's positive stuff uh, in regards to where they're actually at in, in their battle against the virus, but it's uh, when we're going to be back, still a wee bit up in the air, so we're waiting to hear. Yeah, yeah. I think there's been a wee bit of positive noises regarding the rugby league. I think that's been given the green light to get back oh, it? Uh, it? sooner rather than later. So I think mm. once that happens, that's looks maybe a good sign for us as well. So we'll wait and see. Decent. Decent. Kenny, watching, Kenny, this, watching game, this game, um, um, we're in this we're kind in of situation kind of... where uh, Nails has admitted that he wasn't overly happy with the way he played in this game. I know for messaging you, you weren't happy with what happened for you in this. weren't happy with what happened for you in this. Well, listen, it's a, it's, a, it's a game of football where you you found yourself right up against it in the, in the first half hour, first 35 minutes. So uh, managers, obviously, when it's that situation, need to make decisions. I mean, f- from my recollection of the game, it was just less they were better than us. It's as simple as that. Like, there was no... It, like, I just listened to Niels there saying it was no... I mean, you don't turn, go into any game expecting to find yourself 3-0 down uh, at home after 35 minutes, whether it be Leicester or Barcelona, you wouldn't go into the game expecting that. You would expect to... Uh, Especially not getting not battered either. Because yeah, no. we, we, we weren't, weren't like battering. battering. No, it was just like when, you, when you, you get punished for mistakes and sometimes you get games where a chance drops, it goes in. The next chance yeah, drops, yeah. it goes in. And you find yourself right up against it at that point and momentum's all against you. So uh, you, you, when you see games like that, you find that managers tend to make decisions. And I was just on the receiving end of a, a decision that the manager made, made to make a change at half time. And again, it probably could have been anybody, to be honest with you. But yeah, when you're looking yeah, to get back agreed, in that game, agreed. sometimes it's forwards that are are sacrificed and you maybe change a bit of personnel or you change a bit of shape so well he made he made the substitution at like 25 minutes when he knew it was, uh, it it was joy come off didn't he uh, yeah, yeah. Then right, yeah. came on so it was uh, again I, can, I couldn't remember if that was actually a change or if it was maybe an injury I couldn't actually remember uh, Definitely was just a, Joe, Joe was shooting from the halfway. I think I think you're right. Actually, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. He did, he did love a shot. To be fair to the boy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But listen, I say that's that's half time comes. Two changes are made, and and when you get a goal within the first kind of six seven minutes of the second half, then momentum obviously shifts. The crowd got on right on top of it, you think maybe there's a comeback on and you got another one yeah, yeah. session after you, you were the chair, you were the crowd, didn't you? That, that was, yeah, that the was one thing. Like momentum in football, I mean, goals change games, and it could be, again, in, in that particular game, it even shows when you're, you've got a leady 3-0 and you concede the next goal, it becomes a bit of a precarious position that you can be in. Do you want to go and yeah, attack course, to try and put the game to bed, or do you want to kind of sit in and protect what you've got? I mean, I was actually talking to somebody about the playoff final, uh, last night and we're 3-0 up at half time in the playoff final and we can see the penalty within 2-3 minutes of the second half that yeah, Big Matty yeah. Murray saved and yeah, yeah. had that went in 
we, we could have been on the reverse of something like that, you know, because momentum would have absolutely shifted. You go for 3 0 up and thinking you've made it or you've won a game, and all of a sudden, if you concede the next goal, I mean, you're right up against it, you know, and we, 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 we got on top of it in that game. We got a goal quick after, it's 3 2, we then get another goal, and at that point, you're, you're probably thinking there's only one team that's going to win the game at that moment, you know, and luckily enough, we went on and won it because at that point, it was a big three points for us. It was a big three yeah, points yeah. We in, can't, in we the chase for survival. Kenny, can I yeah, ask, can you know, ask. This, this first half, did you find it kind of difficult to kind of, to kind of get yourself into the match? You, you were doing everything right, the movement, you were, you were wanting the ball, but the service just wasn't coming to you. You're playing out on either wing, so I know that you can you like being the, the point man through the middle because your movement, you can go either side, but you're a little bit out of the way there. But you've got to get the ball, you've, they've got to give you the service, haven't they, for you to actually get into the match itself. yourself. Well, well, again, that's it. But when you when you've got a team that have, that, that are on top of the game, which when you're three 0 up as well, I mean, like I said before, goal. It's cliche about goals changing games, but what yeah. what yeah. I mean by that is that they affect both teams in the exact opposite ways. You know, like one team gets a huge lift and they get, and when they get the second and get the third, they're playing high on confidence. Whereas when we've conceded the second and conceded the third, we're thinking, what on earth's going on here? You know, this could yeah. be any score, yeah. and at that moment, it could have been any score. Uh, at half time you're just wanting to get in and you're just hoping that, it's, that I mean, you want to get in and you hope that the manager's going to change something and, and he did change something <laughs> he took me off <laughs> and, put, uh, and put Big Haas on and, uh, and again Haas is a different type of player you know he's a, he is that a player that plays that position it's his specialised position uh, he's got far more dribbling ability and ability than I ever had so getting the ball with him in, in that wider areas further up the pitch he was going to be far greater to me I always relied on a bit of movement and like you said I probably did rely more on service because I was more a mover uh, I, rather than a dribbler you, that game, that game, that you, you know when you actually got hold of the ball when you're looking for that one two like you always do the two was the two wasn't coming. Do you well, know what I mean? It, it, it was one of the again. That's that's the thing. That, that was just the first half of the game, and nothing was nothing really working for us. Yeah. And I, yeah. I play like I say, that when I play in a in a position that's no through the middle. I am I am that player. I'm a passer and a mover. So yeah, if yeah. the options are no there, and again that can be that's no don't uh, that's no uh, a slight on any individual saying that there was nobody showing. It's just things. But we're, we're two 0 down, three 0 down. So yeah, things yeah. are not coming off for you. People tend to react to these kind of scenarios in different ways. Uh, and again, we got in at half time, things <laughs> changed. And there's no doubt about it, the goals obviously at the timing of the goals have a huge, huge effect on the on the on the outcome of the game. And that seems obvious, but it just changes the whole momentum swing. And I, I say it affected us in, a, us in a real positive way when we got that early goal in the second half. And it really puts the doubt in Leicester's mind. So like I said, it was a fantastic I mean even even sitting in the in the dressing room and watching on the TVs and a goal you're thinking, right now we've got a chance, then you get the next one, you've got the chance. You're just I mean to part of the crowd at that moment you know you're trying to put an energy onto the field to play it that's a positive energy which when you've got yeah, 30,000 yeah. fans there you could feel they could believe that something special could have been happening on that day you know sh sure enough it finished off where it was a scrappy goal and on we kind of scrambled it over the line but it was, uh, it was a fantastic result and it gave us a bit of belief and a bit of hope at that moment Boys um, just before we let you go Nails um, just kind of talk to me about this man, Kenny Miller's goal against Man United. It's what two months later after this game or so, and it's oh, it's an iconic moment really for the season. That oh, he slipped, he slipped because of the, the movement when it came. <laughs> that was a bit of dribbling involved in that goal as well. Which yeah, is, that's uh, what I mean. Which is no like it, but uh, it was uh, <laughs> that was uh, a bit of a fortunate slip. And let's be honest, Skill, Tim skill Howard, took him down. Took him down. Tim Howard should have saved firm, it. Firm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but still, names in the paper in the, in the day after in the that. That's it, the rest day history. The rest history. <laughs> <laughs> Nails, brilliant to have you Nails, with us, my friend. To Thanks for talking to us. Yes, Kenneth. See you later, Mum. See you, Ray. It's uh, Kenny Miller uh, still with us still just at the moment. Just at the moment. Um, so, Ken, um, Kenny, is it, is it difficult, was it difficult to watch the second half then? Obviously, being taken off, obviously, you want the team to win, but on an individual kind of. Or no, that you're, you're disappointed you've been taken off. Is it hard to watch the boys go on? And do you feel part of it, even though what, the, the result at the end of it? End of it. Well, again, if you I mean you're being in situations the same, 
So, I mean, you don't actually feel part of it, but it's not about an individual. I mean, the initial, yeah, yeah. the initial disappointment would be there. I mean, it's anger, you know, it's anger, it's disappointment. But what you again, when you look back on it, even even after the, even once you've been in the shower and that kind of initial, that anger's kind of starting to fade away a wee bit. I mean, it's no managers need to make decisions, you know, and sometimes it'll be you. The majority of the time, it'll not be you because there's another yeah. ten guys that it could be. But like I said. When you're taking off, it, it was it was hard. It was a kick in the teeth. But when the team comes in and wins the game, by the end of the game, like I said, you're, you're actually like a fan. You're jumping about. You're on the edge of your seat like everybody else, and you're just hoping that you get the result because, like I said, three points. Every point was a prisoner that year, so it was a. Uh, it was just a huge, huge result. So by the end of the game, yeah, listen, you're disappointed you've no played part in it. That's why. That's why I said to you when you initially texted me about this. I'm thinking, have you actually <laughs> remember actually got taken off at half time? Because I've no, I've not really got a great input actually what went on in the second half. But uh, but like I said, it was a great result and it, it, it was a big result for the boys. So after the initial kind of disappointment and anger, like I say, they, taking off the 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 emotion and the high, the lads actually of coming back and won the game is was was. was Huge. And it was good again. Obviously, I, I was really good friends with Colin Cameron over the course of my five years at Wolves. So it was great for him to get a couple of goals. Fantastic servant for the club. Really, really good player. And it was a good, a big goal for Henri as well. I mean, he, he really toiled at the start of that season. So it was, it was nice for him to get that goal as well and a winning goal as well. So it was, uh, there was a lot of positives came out of that day. Because Kenny, uh, I spoke to Matt Murray a little bit before we started recording this, and he was adamant that you would have hated this comeback in the second half because you weren't part of it. Weren't part of it. Like, listen, he's, he's I mean, he only knows me well, Big Matty. We had, a, we, had a lot of, uh, we had good times together, with Big Matty and, and that squad of players. It was a fantastic group, so he knows me well. But again, when you look back on it, winning the game was far more important than how I was feeling or my ego had taken a wee bit because I get I get taken off at half time. The three points is far more important. Than that. So, and like I say, as managers need to make decisions at, the, at, at those uh, at those moments in games. And like I said, even beforehand, it could have been the manager have made decisions after 20 minutes, half an hour of games that things are just not going well, whether it be personnel-wise or tactically. And uh, you need to make decisions, and and that decision was made, and, and it was the right one because it won the game of football. Mate, Kenny, I feel like mate, it's um, friends reunited because Kenny Miller, say hello to Alex hello, Ray. Alex Ray. Oh, hello, <laughs> Kenny. Hello, brilliant. How are you, pal? All right. I'm good, I'm good. Could, uh, just apology, just, uh, man, I was fearful that I wouldn't get, uh, get uh, into this chat, Kenny. You know, you're talking to different guys from all over the place, different parts of the different parts of the country. Hey, I, just, I didn't know what was going on. I had to get my missus to set this up. <laughs> 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 Kenny, it's been Kenny. brilliant to have you with us. Thank you so Thanks, much Kenny. for joining Cheers, us. Man. All the very best to you. Best to Cheers, you. boys. Cheers, Cheers. 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 Bye. Kenny Miller. Um, Alex Ray, hello, mate. How are we doing, fellas? Yeah, we're so, all very good, pal. How are you? I was a wee, honestly, I was a wee bit kind of fearful of not getting in touch with you guys due to the fact I've never heard of this clean feed and all this carry on. So <laughs> once I heard Kenny and Neil speaking, I kind of got a wee bit of kind of relief that this is the fact that I've actually managed to get on. Oh, Alex, we're back in. What perfect oh, timing. I tell you what, Alex, I've got to say you were such an angry man in the first half so angry you were having pops at everyone you were getting on the ball you were passing it you were shouting you were going mad but I say Cameron with the goal there uh, what was it What was it like at half time I'm sure there was a few harsh words said by the players to each other as well I think to be honest with you I think everyone was a wee bit shell shocked because um, we, we, we're going into that game on the back of decent form you know, look, I say decent form I think we'd beaten Man City we had a couple of decent draws uh, away from home uh, we were up at Bolton and uh, and then I think we went to Fulham and as as well. So we started to nick some points at that point, and we felt like okay, we're going against Leicester. We always felt as if they would be kind of a wee bit nipping top with ourselves, you know, in terms of the personnel they had. So um, to go in at three 0 down, you think to yourself, oh my God, this is a doom, and it just takes uh, the wind out your sails. That the fact that you've actually got a few points, the Molyneux was absolutely rocking that day. Uh, I remember the Leicester fans; they were in good fettle as well. Uh, and then you're going in and you're all looking at each other and you, big man you know what it's like you're all looking at the blame game you're all looking at each other <laughs> you've all picked up and all that you're trying to kind yeah. of salvage something for it uh, yeah. and then just trying to get some sort of semblance of how you try and get back into the game I think you know uh, and there was always words because what a dressing room it was in terms of how, how would you put this egos there was a plenty a lot of egos in that dressing room so um, when you've got a lot of guys that have got a lot to say to each other, you know, you're all kind of trying to put your pitch in, you're trying to do your bit. 
Um, but at the same token, you're no way to lose perspective of trying to get back in the game. Alex, who was the biggest ego? <laughs> I was just about to swear there. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was my golf partner. The guy that never moved out of the centre circle, Paul Inns. <laughs> he, uh, he was brutal, man. He was... Um, he was the orchestrator that actually he's like you know when you see the the, 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 the conductor it just puts his horns up everywhere and tells people where to run and he was the governor at it never mind uh, anything else so if you're talking about eagles it's, there's nobody bigger than Nancy's <laughs> surely so when you when you come out for the second half do you genuinely feel that like you can get something out or is it just basically damage limitations Alex because <laughs> Listen, obviously Colin, you, Colin gets the goal surely yeah. that then thinks you know what it's game on now let's because you know what they, they weren't, it wasn't three 0 at half time, uh, on performance wise. They just they they yeah. just they were clinical, weren't they? Well, I have to say, it's big and see if you actually remember back to that day, and uh, you, you, sometimes you reflect back in players that you've played against, and you think, Do you know what, he was frightening. See, see Les Ferdinand, he was kind of getting towards the end of his career at that period. I know he wasn't he, a, a spring chicken. But you, someone like yourself, you know what's the importance of being a good header of the ball. And, and he wasn't a giant a guy. He wasn't. He, I wouldn't even think he was above six feet, Les. Yeah. The two goals that he scores were nothing short of sensational. So you know when he when he's rifled in a bullet he did for the first gen, and then a couple of minutes later he's done it for the other side. Um, and then so your your, your question is uh, when you're coming back out, you're thinking just try and nick a goal, see if we can get something back out of this game because at no yeah. point does anybody think they're going to go on and win it. I, I think. I, I often remember Biggin, and um, I was writing a wee uh, column for the Express and Star uh, for two hats and a balloon, Biggin. It was like, I think they were giving me a, a, I, think a, I, think were, a, I think they were sending us a couple of bottles of Iron Brew every week. Right? And, um, and um, what do you call it? Um, I remember saying that I don't think, I think within that column, I'm saying half the stadium, if, if my memory serves me right, I would imagine half the stadium had emptied. I think a lot of the guys that would be watching. Uh, were a wee bit as you say I think Kenny mentioned people were disgusted and if you're 3 out doing at home regardless of how much you're in the game there's something not quite right yep. and uh, we come back out and we're saying right let's just try and fight and try and scrap and take a wee bit of kind of, kind of professional pride here but to actually you're absolutely right see when we call and gets the goal you think oh brilliant and, and my memory serves me right I remember the Leicester fans were celebrating it I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I remember going cheeky fuckers you know and, and I'm thinking to myself <laughs> This is no right, by the way. And I kind of spurred. I was the member going, That's a, 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 they, were, they, they were mocking us. And I thought to myself, this is not on. So um, uh, to get a goal again with wee cams, I can't, who, can any of remember who was actually brought down for that penalty? Because I can't even remember. Oh, uh, um, hang on. I, I, think it, I think it's a handball where Jody oh, challenges. Right. Because the thing is, I remember wee cams struck it. Uh, and I, was it Walker that was in goals for? Yeah, for yeah. So I think he kind of got a wee limp hand uh, pop it on wrist yeah, and, and, and didn't to keep it out. <laughs> so um, uh, well, listen you've still got 30 minutes to go and at that time you know, as I said I've mentioned this many times I don't think I think the stadium's probably half full but the actual noise and, and Chris will know this when you talk about momentum then very much we were on the front and you could actually sense blood at that stage and um, yeah well, I think everybody was and, and it does it gives you that extra yard You've got the punters uh, you know, on, on your uh, kind of case as well. They're, they're right behind you. And you can literally see Leicester starting to crumble. It's, it's almost as if they're running on quicksand. And the whole momentum had changed at that stage. So uh, once it went back to two, but you're most certainly think that that stage, particularly with about 30 minutes to go, you think, oh, aye, this is a real game, uh, possibility. So we've just won the free kick. I think this is where the penalty comes from, Looms. Henri Kamara, who we'll talk about in a minute. Um, Hassan Kashlul. I forgot Hassan Kashlul played in this season. He was a brilliant lad. He was a great lad. He was dead cool and uh, just a, a really nice individual. I'd obviously played against him uh, at various clubs and uh, I always thought he was a really good, good player. Uh, and when he came, he was just a lovely guy. So, no, you're absolutely right because I forgot all about him as well. <laughs> <laughs> so you've just won a you've just won a free kick, a couple of yards outside the box. It must be because I'm sure we're around an hour at this point. That's right. There's you trying to drill it in. We get a throw in. But you're doing. You know that you're on the front foot here, Alex. You're taking everything quick. You're wanting the ball. Yeah. 
No, well, listen, uh, listen, you know what it's like, Biggie. See, when you get a goal, it, it just perks you up a little bit and, yeah. it, and it kind of drives you forward. Goals are really big catalysts within this the is game. This is it. Penalty! <laughs> Keith Gillespie. What's he doing there? It's 100%, isn't it? Keith Gillespie what? against Jody Craddock. That is a mismatch. <laughs> so, so what is it? Is that a header? What does he do? Is he, so, what does he do, Biggie? It's Sean it's, Newton's cross. To and the back, yeah. Jody Craddock's at the back post and Gillespie just gets himself in all sorts of trouble and he's just got his right arm up to like hits his yeah. forearm straight up yeah. it's, it's, just, it's just a case of someone been in the wrong area and, and they did the wrong things Gillespie wasn't known for defending and especially at the back post when you get somebody like Big Jody towering in so I, I, I think I remember it. I think it was, his arm was above his head yeah that's right yeah he's and, and he just kind of flicks it on didn't he I, I, that's, I think I remember it but you boys have got the hindsight a wee bit. Cameron, just with it, with with the penalty, with it, was it Cameron who was always taking penalties or not? Was that something that well, you know, it was squeaky squeaky bum time, wasn't it? Oh, well, listen, I was a bit of a glory hunter anyway, Biggie. That I would quite happily have took it. Um, I took penalties at more or less every club, but we Cam's uh, was keen to take them as well because he liked to get. I think he's a midfielder for you. Or a striker for that matter. See if you're actually confident, just grab a ball and go on there. So I, I, I'm absolutely yeah. certain we camps was a designated one that day because of knowing me, if it if it wasn't, I'd have grabbed the ball. What I love though is that you off straight into the net to get the ball. You're like, I'm not celebrating this. We're we're th- now back to three two. Let's get on with it. Well, but as I said to you, I think uh, for me, I think for, at that point, I think we're looking at uh, about 30 minutes to go or so. So yeah. you just know, you sense it. See, when you've got the experience, of the, as I said, the, the experience in that team, it was a very, uh, you know, a lot of guys were in there. Uh, I think Dennis and Insey, myself, um, you know, the, Blakey, you know, there was a, the, the squad was quite, um, as I said, they were quite well on. So. They could, it, it, when you're at that stage, you know you can sense it. Um, so as you said, I, I remember actually going into the net to grab the ball. I think Cam's went to win and get it, but I beat him to it. Um, and um, by doing that, then we just get the game started again and try and get back on the front foot because to score two goals in the first 15 minutes was a dream start in that second half, and the, the tide had turned. Alex, look, we've spoke to Jody. Obviously, we've had Kenny on and, and Nails on, and they're all saying about the, the quality of this squad. You know, the names you've already said there. You've touched yep. on the egos. What, 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 what was it that that went wrong? You know, it's it's because I'm looking at the names. Of course, there's a couple of injuries as well. Uh, yeah. But but is is it all down to injuries or recruitment? Was there enough players brought well, in? Because I'm looking at this team now playing, and it's yeah. up there, mate. No, no. Listen, uh, the 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 big Matty. Uh, did Big Matt not get injured? Yeah. Uh, earlier on. That, for me, I always felt when we lost Big Matt, and that's now uh, slight on <coughs> Oxy, because Oxy was great um, as well, but I just felt as if because of the big fella, I just thought, as, you know, I felt as if he would have been pivotal, you know, to see if you've got a top class keeper, they, they, they nick a load of points yeah. for you. Uh, and I actually believe that Big Matty would have been in England international on a regular basis. He just had an unbelievable presence of him. Um, and he was just in, you know, just starting off his you know, career at that stage in terms of really establishing himself as a, as, a, as a quality keeper. For me, and when I look back at the, at the season, um, I th- I, personally, I always think you've got to spend money. Now, you look at Wolves' current squad. And when you look at what someone like uh, Jimenez is actually bringing to the table, um, and I always felt as if, you know, because we, we, when you go up to that top three, you've got to get guys that are getting in around about the 14, 15 goals that you're just netting games for you. I think that for me was a catalyst uh, that would have made a, a difference. I think I think when you listen to Dave Jones speaking about that particular build up to that season and things, he didn't get any, any, enough support. In terms of spending money, you know, you'll spend a couple of million, which you know it doesn't really give you a fighting chance. And and and, and, and there will be players who had been brought to the club who were decent on paper, but their best years were probably behind some of them. So yeah. uh, for me, if they'd invested a wee bit more, um, because you're right, there was a lot of good names, there was a lot of guys, but they were kind of coming to the end of the game. I was coming to the end of my career as well. I didn't say Dennis. Um, you know, I think Blakey would have been my age as well, so I, I kind of run about that. So there was St- uh, Dean Sturridge, I think Sturridge was still there. St- I think Stephen Everson came in as well. Cashew, they, these were all, 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 all those guys were all kind of similar, all good names and about the block. Um, but kind of getting towards 
the latter stages of her career. Um, Alex, there's so many things I want to ask you before, especially we get to your goal in this game. One no, thing we were. T- no, I'm not interested in that. Get to my saw, but me, get to my goal. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing we were talking about earlier in the game, right? Um, why are Colin Cameron's shorts so much bigger than everybody else's? It's ridiculous. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you into a secret, big, and they were these shorts, they were these trousers. <laughs> 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 he used to go to the wee, uh, the, the what do you call it, lads, uh, what do you call it, the, the big child child section in uh, Marks and Spencer to get his trousers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a phone call for the wee man, what he said about it. <laughs> no, no, I've no idea. Listen, you know what it's like, um, Chris, you, you, you end up, um, you end up, um, I used to always wear uh, big, uh, large tops. And sometimes when I look back, you know, even back to my Millwall days, I used to always wear a, a short sleeve. But the actual sleeves were coming down about four, three or four inches below my elbow to, towards my wrist. And, I, and, I, and I, I've always looked back and thought, who was I actually thinking about wearing a big, big tap like a big baggy tap? <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, when, whenever, and, and, and when I kind of finish playing, you look at teams like Leeds now, they have, you know, the, the under armour type, you know, the skin tight. Yeah. I would yeah. never, ever have been able to wear them because I just felt it kind of a wee bit closer, you know, it's closer. I didn't even, I always liked a wee bit of kind of um, space between my, my taps. So I always had big, massive taps. Um, yeah. So maybe that's why cams. I can guarantee you one thing. It wasn't for anything that was downstairs you needed. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you superstitious, Alex? Were you a superstitious I, player? I, I, I was a wee bit. I, in terms of, you know, when you pull up your socks, I had a particular way I'd fold the top part. I would fold them over and then fold them over again. Uh, yeah. So that it, it was kind of like a robust bit, just an inch or two below my kneecap. Um, I always wore socks, a pair of ankle socks underneath uh, my my main socks as well, and it was. I'll be honest with you, big, and it was partly to be, to. I, I, I'm trying to think. You know, when you think back to the Wolves kit, man, when you you know what it's like when you get at the start of the season, you get really nice, fluffy, white, brand new socks, but yeah. after about six or eight washes of like cardboard, you know that kind of <laughs> yeah. you're, yeah. you're you're trying to kind of get them into your feet because they, they lose their shape and so forth. But I quite liked the fact that they were kind of really tight and kind of lost everything because what it did, it, it kind of reinforced my. And so whenever I was going into tackles, I know, <laughs> I know I could smash somebody because I felt as if I was all kind of reinforced doing the bottom end. Yeah, so yeah. I, so I always felt as if get me a pair of the old um, white ankle socks that were kind of tight and uh, protected my ankles so that I could go in and, and, and feel comfortable going into tackles really. That's spot on. So that was my superstition. As long as I got all that, I was quite happy to go on the pitch and kind of crack on. Um, also, Henri Kamara, what was he like? I know, listen, I, 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 had a, I had a really good... I always find him... Uh, he was a nice wee guy, actually quite... Funny, you know, it must be difficult coming into that environment when you're kind of... You know, the, as I said, there was a lot of characters and, and then you've got a guy coming in for for where he came from and you know I always found him um, and, and I think Kenny touched on a, an important thing I think get, uh, Henri getting that goal was important because there were several games prior to that where you know he had some really um, he, as a striker Chris you want to come into a, an environment hit the ground running and, and it didn't quite happen for him uh, particularly in the earlier games because you know I came back to one game the Man United game uh, when he beat us 1-0 after about the third or fourth game into that season. He had a couple of one-on-ones and really good opportunities. So for him to get that goal that day and the winning goal was great because it was, um, you know, it was it was tremendous. Uh, oh, there he is! Oh, what a better that is! <laughs> Top off as well, Alex. Wait, uh, listen, I'm going to tell you something big and right. This, this, this is gospel. See, over the course of my career, so we are, see if I've played against anyone, so, see when I used to see people kissing the badge or taking their taps off, I used to go, look at that arsehole. That's an absolute <laughs> fucking tosser. <laughs> and when I look back, if I, when I look back at the celebration for that heater bigging, I want to punch myself right in the face. <laughs> I'm absolutely disgusted. I mean, disgusted with my behaviour. So what was it? Just emotion? Well, by the way, and, 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 
it's, it's, listen, I'm giving you an honest assessment. When I seen people taking their tap off and getting it the whole razzmatazz, I used to think, it's Tadger. And, um, uh, and, and so I used to look at that and go, nah. But it was pure emotion because it was, I, I think I scored about 130, 40, 130 or 140 goals or something. Not once can I recall ever celebrating, taking my tap off, getting it at the yee-haw at, you know, at the top of my... It, it was pure emotion. Um, and I, I look back a couple of years ago at that goal and there's a, there's a camera from away up the far end looking down beyond the fans and then you see us all coming into the shot as you run towards that, that main stand uh, touch yeah. touchline. And I always went and go, my God, look at the actual emotion for that crowd and the players to that actual uh, equalising goal because I, I often nicked a few headers, but they're usually wee glancing ones. That was a kind of, that was a really, because I'll be honest with you, it's not something that I was actually known for in terms of that one. You, you just set it back across, because the keeper's trying to adjust his feet going across the line and you just help it back. Because the one thing oh. I do recall was, I think it was Dennis Irwin that put the ball in. And it was yeah. an unbelievable cross because he's absolutely whipped it, which actually eliminates the defenders. And I'm just trying to help it back to where it came from. So, but the celebration was, I'm actually, I'm so disappointed. It was so fucking, it was torturous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it makes sense. You've said yourself, you know, coming out, let's just try and salvage something from the second half. Yep. The Leicester fans were celebrating Colin Cameron's first goal. You know, that you had the bee in your bonnet. You could see it. Right. You, you knew straight away, all of a sudden, you get that equalising goal. There's what, how many minutes is there left? Yeah, there's what, 15, 15, 20 minutes left. You know what, it's game on. All in, And you says that it's in your favour. You were, you were the team that was imposing yourself. You are the team that was in top. And as Leicester are all, all the players are back now in their defensive third. And it's just all yeah. rules now. Yeah, no, listen, I think I think there was over 20 minutes. Big. If my memory serves me right, I'm thinking, my God, we've managed to get back in level terms. And I think there's still half, half of that second half to go. I, yeah. I, I could be wrong, but... I, I remember thinking, my God, we've got plenty of time to go and get a winner. But <laughs> subconsciously, you're thinking to yourself, we can't just get the old uh, the old bugle going and try and be cavalier because to lose that game would have been. You imagine the setback that would have been uh, psychologically. But yeah, we, we, as you rightly said, it was usually wave after wave. And as I said, the Leicester players were in quicksand because they 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 were. If it was a boxing match, the ref would have threw the towel in because it was just constant wobble and. Uh, it was great, and we've all played in games where you are the dominant team and uh, you're just constantly uh, kind of bombarding the opposition's um, goal. And um, no, I think it's um, at that stage we're just trying to press for the winner. One of the things I'll never understand really is that you got back to 3 2, and they then made like three subs in pretty much the space of two minutes, and it kind of like they took Les Ferdinand and Dick off and Gillespie all off and it was a bit like you know you were already back to 3-2 at this point <laughs> yeah 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 well the thing is I think I think uh, he was probably trying to get like some sort of impetus because at that point I think most of the the Leicester players as I said they, they, they looked as if they were fell shocked and were on uh, the back foot uh, and you're right they did they actually took three of their key players off because um, Ferdinand and Dick off uh, you know, they were kind of clever, intelligent players. Uh, but I think at that stage, they wanted to try and mix things up. But just looking at uh, who they brought on, you know, they brought... You, it's like you're saying there, Chris, about in terms of... Uh, when you look about the Wolf squad, but, but when you look about, we, um, you know, you've got uh, Nalis, uh, Marcus Ben, Marcus Ben, Pignan, Pignan, yeah. you know, good, yeah, yeah. good yeah. players. So, they, uh, and that was a kind of yardstick for most teams you know at that level they they, they all had decent players even in the bench Hignett and all that you know, we had you played against for years and Marcus Ben went on to have a really decent career as well analysis yeah. so you you factor all that and they're obviously just trying to kind of mix it up a little bit to try and get kind of some sort of foothold back in the game uh, oh, Michael Oakes has just come out and headed it from the edge of the box Oaksy it's all going off now <laughs> No, oh, now it's tasty. Someone's just wiped out Hassan Kashlul and here comes Alex Ray. What is that? <laughs> there have been a few it's... challenges coming, I think, Scowcroft on, on Urban as well. You know, they're trying to kind of 3-3, three, three, the toys, throwing the toys at the pram. A few, it was Hignett on the challenge. It's had a little, yeah, it's got to be done though, isn't it? It's part of the game, isn't it? You've got to be a wee bit physical as well. Oh, that's, oh. A, that's a naughty one, by the way. No, no, we'll do. See, see when you're big and see when you, um, you're in these games. 
and things are not going quite your way. Sometimes you've got to go and leather someone to try and change the dynamic, try and get into a fight. Yeah. Uh, and when you look about, listen, Leicester were kind of known for that. You know, when you look at some of the personnel they had, big Jerry Tiger, and there were big tags because of fighting an empty house. Um, <laughs> so, you know, uh, Muzzy is, it was a good wee Snowcroft. Ferdinand could look after himself. So, when you look at all these guys, uh, Tiger and Big Elliot, you know, they, listen, I, I, honestly, I remember uh, Milton and home diversing a wee bit of digressing, but. I remember going uh, up to Leicester with all these characters, uh, Elliot, Taggart and all that, and I went there with Millwall. I'm no joke, man. We'd wee guys like Hurlock and all that. You've never seen it like it. It was like a standoff. They were all kind of charging in. And <laughs> it was every single player wanted to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe in, a, in, a, 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 in these days, the club, both club, in the old days, sorry, uh, in these days, you would have been most certainly, it would have been a club fine because everybody was yeah. right in the middle of it all. So I get all that. I get the fact that people want to change it. Somebody leathers somebody. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it's a wee bit tepid now because of you know some of the tackles and things. You just could not. It would be, it would be a red card. Some of these things uh, today. I was I was going to ask that, Alex. Is that something that the manager you he gave you a freedom to to do that because you you were that type of player, as good a footballer as you were. You had that other side to you as well that said, you know what? And sometimes it does. It just gives the rest of the players. A lift, the the the, yeah. the 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 captain going in, that that player going in and winning the ball with a, a yeah. good firm challenge. You know, the the mat because you can't have those challenge, you can't have those challenges in, in today's football. Is that is that something yeah. that's lacking from the game? Is it? Oh, listen, I, 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 I'm not exactly sure where the game's going. Uh, you know, in your day when you win a tackle and you clearly get the ball first and then you follow through and get the man, it really galvanised. You, firstly the teammates plus it galvanised the supporters yeah. and that's kind of been lost a little bit uh, pff, I don't want to sit here as a, 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 a saying because I think obviously safety is a paramount as well but um, I, I think it misses the panache that, that you know because uh, I, I've got to be honest out of all these tackles over the, the course of your career that I was given and also receiving I, I cannot recall um too many. I, I, I done my cruise ship, but that was partly because I'm on stupidity when I turned blind one time, uh, and the guy came through me and caught me uh, with his trailing leg in my knee. But in the main, I think over the course of the, the career, I don't think I'd done too many people that had bad injuries or received it. So um, I, I, I think it is missing. But in the days in particular, it, it kind of galvanise people. It, it gets you on the front foot. Uh, and I told this, I said, yeah, so 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 when Snowcroft is leather and Dennis. I think I think we all knew yeah. we're all kind of experienced players at that point where you, you understand what they're actually trying to do. But it, as many times as you want, it, 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 if you're on the back foot and you're trying to leather people, I don't think it has the same impact. Particularly when you're obviously on the front foot, that just makes sense that people are actually going to be, uh, you know, it's, it's about momentum goals, and then when you're kind of th we've thrown in a few tackles. You can actually see the opposition crumbling at that stage. If there's ever two people that I would absolutely bank on to have a conversation about how you can't tackle and foul anymore, it's you two. I love this so much. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Well, but 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 uh, so you can back to, to you know like guys like Chris, um, and again I'm, I'm just because when you're talking about a centre forward, lane one on a, a centre half, um, we 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 played an old firm game and John Hartson. And I mean, they've put it to the right back. They've shelled up the line, and jo John and I, I don't even know if it's ten or fifteen seconds. Ten seconds on the clock, and John Hartson smashed uh, Kiriakos, uh, Soteris yeah. Kiriakos, the big centre half, uh, who only have a very, I think he won the Euros not that week, Greece. And by the way, the big game was down for about four minutes, and that set the tone. Celtic went on and won that game. So, you know, as much as we kind of dare, we you know, going through people and all that. Big centre, big centre forwards. Cause we're also setting the tone uh, in games as well yeah. because you can. <clears throat> yeah. Chris, you'll know this better than most. You actually see centre half crumbling, going, "Oh no, here he comes again." So they they, they, they don't defend properly. They don't put themselves in the right areas because you know big centre centre forwards are going to smash them. So as much as you get That's wee funny. guys and big guys in the middle of the party, get centre half trying to bully, and it's just a, and it's just a bit trying to um, win your territory. Uh, and get an overrun or overpower, whatever it may well be, your particular opponent on that day. 
Mate, it's been brilliant to have you on. Um, when all this is over and we start playing games again, we've got to get you down to Molyneux. I know fans would love to see you down there. No, listen, I, I, and it would, uh, as long as it's a Sunday game, because I'm doing a wee bit with the media, and I've, I've been meaning to come down the, the, I think one of the only... T- <laughs> this is ridiculous. One of the only times I ever came to Molyneux was, and I think it might have been Mick McCarthy's last game, did they lose 5-1, 5-0, 5-1 to West Brom? Yeah, that was Mick McCarthy's I, last game, yeah. Yeah, I went to, uh, I went to. I think I was more of the time back, so I'm not sure it's a good idea me coming back to one <laughs> Yeah, maybe you that one on this fella. <laughs> oh, big and it was pain. I was, I was sitting in the main stand, greeting, man, it was painful. Um, but listen, obviously Big Mick had a really great rapport and, you know, had a great spell at the club. But just that particular day, I come back. One that he wanted to remember, but um, no, listen, I'd love to come back. It's a, it's a club I hold uh, dear, uh, it was great. And uh, it's, uh, when you just listen to guys, and even when you hear Nails and Kenny, and um, I was one of the guys that recommended Big Jody Craddock to, to Dave. I said to him, Go and get the big, and he's brilliant. You know, you bring a lot of qualities to the table. And when you look at Big Craddock done to the uh, you know, to to his serving uh, service to the club, you know. Um, so you, yeah. you, you, and I think he's well regarded by the punters as well. And I think they appreciate type get yeah. type of guys like Big Jody and so forth. Big Butts was another one. So it's just great to to reminisce about all the days, even though the season didn't pan out the, the, the way we'd liked it. Coming back to win this game, did you think this would be it? This would be the start of a revival this year? Well, obviously, yeah. Listen, uh, what as I said to you. Uh, I thought it was, you know, a remarkable turnaround, and I also felt as if it could be something that we could kick on uh, from. Because um, it's, it's interesting. Because I think, you know, when you look at, we went and beat Burnley after that. But, but the problem you've got is, uh, see, when you're playing at that level, every single uh, game you're playing against is extremely. You you have to be at the top of your game uh, just to get a result. You have to be at the top of your game because see if three or four of the team are not playing. Uh, and I think strength and depth plays a part in that as well. And I think that's one of the reasons why when you've got a bigger squad, better quality, um, then you, 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 you can mitigate against that in terms of bringing on players. So I think, I think um, you know, it's always difficult for the team promotion. I think the key thing for, for Wolves at that point was that they got a lot of finance. It kind of, you know, it was the first time they'd been up in 20 years as well. So that started, I, I believe now even to this day, that, you know, it's allowed them to be where they are. They've been up a few times, they've been down. Uh, where they're at, they're at the moment is just a remarkable uh, yeah. piece of business by the owners. Uh, I think the management team, the personnel that they've brought to the club. But if, and then I'm being honest, if you think about the money they threw at it, having, you know, they threw a hell of a lot of money at the championship. And then when you look at the, the money they've spent uh, in, the, in, in, in the transfer windows in the premiership, I think that reinforces what I've said. If you throw good money at it, and uh, but more importantly, you, you recruit the right players, whew, yeah. It, it, hence the reason why you can have that consistency. That like people were saying could uh, could Wolves do better uh, this year than they did last year, or even replicate what they did. And I'm and, and the, the fact that they were kind of showing signs and the, the run in Europe and so forth, it shows that they're, they're actually kicking on the, the, the squad and and are actually going in the right direction. So, with the same investment going forward, the Wolves fans can actually uh, be confident that they can continue to grow as a club and be able to kind of keep on this trajectory. So, I, th- I think that the future looks really bright for, for Wolves and I think it's partly to do with the structure in place where you've got the owners, you've got a brilliant management team, you've got a great bunch of um, players with real quality and then you've got a fan base who are buying into what's happening. So, that all the ingredients are there for, for uh, to have a sustained period for Wolves for, for, for a while, I would suggest. Alex, been brilliant to have you on again, as ever. Just before you go, say hello to your old gaffer. Hello, Dave Jones. <laughs> gaffer, how are you? Oh, we can't hear oh, him no, at the minute. Oh, no, no, text you, I told you. Technology, he'll be asking, <laughs> he'll be asking his missus to get him on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that. Alex, brilliant to have you on as ever. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers, guys. Be safe. See you soon. Stay safe. Alex Ray, what a legend he is, by the way. Absolutely. Honestly, he could uh, he could do this all on his own. He's, the stories that he comes out with, just the, the knowledge 
uh, and and the honesty as well. You know, he says things that that, that, that players wouldn't say, uh, and and he's and he's right. You know, I think uh, just about the way that he looks at the match, the superstitions, the way that the way that the chatty challenges uh, he directs and, and and his energy as well. But it's uh, nah, he's all round. Just uh, he would have been, you, you know, you know what kind of character he is. Imagine him in the dressing room. How could you not go out and, and, and try and get the, the best out yourself when you got players with, with that kind of voice and that experience around? So, and the demands that he would have put on the players around him as well. You know, I think that's one of the reasons why Dave Jones probably thought 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 so highly of him. You know, so it was it'd be quite an interesting one to speak to him about. It's been a fascinating game to watch this, hasn't it? Because both teams are really giving it a good go, actually, especially since it's gone back to three three. Yeah, you know, I think the first half, half was a scrappy affair. Leicester were just clinical. And then Wolves have come out and completely bossed the second half. You know, I think... Oh, lovely really rainbow. Used... Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Mikey. Uh, yeah, so the air of... They've played, you know, it's one of those... Do you go out that second half and you think, right, guys, let's just go out and win the second half. Maybe not the game. You get that early goal. And straight away you, you, you see it the, the second when the second goal went in it was Leicester Leicester crumbled, didn't they? And it was the challenge he started coming in and then when, when Alex got the equaliser, I think there was always there was only gonna be one winner, but they still have to keep doing the right things and it's I guess it's that information coming from the sides as well that, that's uh, that's got to kinda of get filtered down into the players that's uh, that they take on board. And Leicester panicking now. In mentally are they panicking that yeah. they've blown a three yeah, goal lead? You said yourself they, they, they made the substitutions at 3-2 you know Ferdinand going off uh, Marcus Bent coming on Marcus Bent just young player coming through good good player I played with Bentley at, at, uh, at Charlton uh, but like you say that that, that says a lot a, a game that you're completely in control of 3-2 uh, that's when a manager's got to make that decision make a change and hopefully it'll just stop stop uh, the, 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 the fluency of Wolves and it just wasn't to be Oh, there it is! There we go. <laughs> and Urban again, you know, the, you talk about what thirty-eight years old, great energy, great first touch, head up before the ball goes across, and like you say, Kamara in the right place at the right time, unbelievable. And yeah, look how calm Dave Jones, Jones is there. Yeah, <laughs> not even a smile there. As I say, there's still minutes to go, so understandable. I'm hoping he can hear us. Hello, Dave Jones. Can you hear us? Is that better? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's much better. Much better. Um, I guess kind of the big thing then, Dave, is we've just watched back this incredible epic match. Kind of just how did you feel about it as it was all unfolding? Um, well, from what I can remember, and it's um, I'm normally quite good at remembering goals and, <laughs> and games. Um, every goal he scored was from a corner. It was, it was as if it was deja vu, all three goals. Um, I think two come yeah. from the left and one from the right and um, I, I couldn't believe it because it, a 3 nil. it wasn't that I don't know what it looks like on the playback but it, it wasn't that sort of game <laughs> it, just, it was just an unbelievable yeah. game to be involved in and that, so it's always a story that I say that uh, I got booed off for half time I got carried off for full time so it was, it was and I always remember Mickey standing in the tunnel at full time and I, don't, I think he was like me in the first half just what, what the hell's gone on and that, that's what it was like but it, it, was, it was a strange game because one I didn't think we deserved to be 3-0 down and my annoyance was more that every goal seemed to be exactly the same type of goal that we conceded and I just couldn't wait to get him in at uh, half time and just quietly talk to them that's, that's that, that, that. That's a, that's a question there, Dave. You know, I think uh, the first half, uh, there wasn't a lot in it. I think just Leicester, they were a little bit probably clinical, you know, I think. Uh, but at half time, you've seen a complete different team come out in the second half, you know, front foot challenges, completely took the, the game by the scruff of the neck. It's quite interesting because the players, the guests that we've had on, they spoke. They said that you you were always calm. Like you could have a proper, you could have a goal, but you never, you weren't one of those managers that that was that was that shouted and that. But so, how did you get your your message across to the players? You know, was it because you you just said there that it, there wasn't a lot in it, wasn't that kind of game. You you never thought they deserved to be three 0 down, but you still have to make a, a an impression on the players to go out and get the reaction that you got in the second half, surely. Yeah, I mean, listen, 
there's two. If you're getting absolutely battered, which you know, you know, you know yourself when you're in a game and you know on the day you're not as good as what you you're competing against, then sometimes it just becomes uh, try and keep the score down. It's you know damage limitations here sort of thing. But we never felt that at half time and going in with the staff. It was just a case of can we get an early goal. <laughs> because you never know yeah. and people always say 2 nils a dangerous scoreline but you know you score early on a 3-0 the hope starts to come back and I mean you know on the day Henri was um, you know everything he started to play and I think once we got the first goal I think the belief came back the crowd started to get behind them and then when Guess the three two and everything else and three three. I always remember turning around and saying that we're going to win this. And I just, I just remember Mickey's face because he's looking across at me as if to say, "What the hell's going on here?" It was like um, I don't, having a drink with him afterwards. I, I, the best way to describe it was it was as if uh, we changed their uh, places. We changed suits because uh, I know what he was feeling at full time because I actually had that at half time. And but I always did believe within the game that if we did score first, we we did have a chance because, as you said, that, you know from what I can remember, there wasn't a great deal in it. It was just that every every time they had a shot or a header on goal, it it was in. And you're thinking, Jesus Christ, what's what the hell's going on here? But. You know, as I said, it's to be to be booed off at half time is not a nice feeling, but um, I certainly was quite happy to be carried off at full time. Which yeah, no, but it was, it was a strange game. It was, and and to be fair, the club had had a lot of them, um, you know, in the course of time that I'd been manager there. When you think he, there's nothing in it, um, you know, I, I remember in one game it wasn't a Wolves game. I remember being three 0 up at half time, and I ended up drawing four all. And I was lucky to come away with a four all at full time. So when you've had that experience in games, you've always got to have a belief. And, and talking to the players, you know, you go through the manager's spiel that you have to make them believe that they can get something out of this. And I think that's what we must have done, everybody. And I think it was more anger and shouting and um, maybe just being composed of what we're going to go out and do. And as you said, I, I wasn't... I, ran to, I could rant and rave with the best of them, but you've only got three minutes, as you well know, uh, concentration yeah, yeah. span. You've got you've got three or four minutes to give your information because then players start to wander off and want to do their own thing, get prepared, you know, to go out in the second half. So whatever was said within that three or four minutes, and I'd be lying if I said I knew what I said because. You know, I, can't, I haven't got it that, that good a memory, but um, it, it would have been more instructional just to cut out um, what we'd been doing in the first half and basically start to play and players start to perform what we knew they could, uh, the level that they could do. And I'd imagine that that's what you know was said at the time. And then all of a sudden we did get that early goal and then it was floodgates open for us as if it was for them in the first half. Dave, if there's any kind of game that sums up your time with the club, because it always felt like it was a bit of a roller coaster in everything that was going on, is this the game that kind of encapsulated it in 90 minutes from your whole time at the club? Um, no. The, <laughs> when I arrived at the club, as I said to you before, Mike, when I arrived at the club, my exact words to the chairman was that it would be a roller coaster. We'd have our ups and we'd, we'd have our downs, but slowly we, we would always be trying to climb that, you know, that upward spiral. Um, the game that defined the club for me for everything that we put in, of course, was the playoff final. Um, that, that's the game that defined everything for me personally. Uh, for what what we tried to do at the football club, the Premiership year was um, how can I put it? Well, I said this to you before. It was the mo- most awkward time for me because we knew we needed to be better and we needed better players in. The players knew we needed help, so 
I, I don't think that defined anything at all. I think it was the playoff final that um, got everybody up and about on what the club was all, all there for and was to then to propel the club forward. But unfortunately, for whatever reason, was you know, Sir Jack did. He didn't want to invest into the club. And I heard you talking before, you know, about Nuno now and what he's got. When you've got that investment in, you start to look at a different quality of player. You start to look at players that are not only going to stabilise your club, but also be able to grow your club. When I was at the club, it was about stabilising, getting players in to stabilise the club, get us to where we want to go, and then bringing players to take the club where it then needs to go. And I think that's what that's the difference between my time and probably Mick's time and what Nuno's doing now. He's got that financial backing where he can start to plan forward because he knows he's got players that are good enough to do that I knew once we got to the Premiership the squad would need to change again and that's what we wasn't you know what we, I wasn't able to do because there just wasn't the finances to do and that's not taking anything away from the players were there because they knew that themselves they wanted help themselves and that was never forthcoming I think Wolves at this moment in time, they're, they're still on that building process because they know they can get the players into the club that can take that club forward. And, and Nuno's doing a fantastic job, as you know, as everyone can see. Dave, it's been brilliant to get you on. Thank you for being patient enough with us to get this technology sorted. And hopefully, when all this is done and dusty, we can get you in and, and do a proper chat about your time at the club. <laughs> right, okay, mate, no problems. Good to speak to you, Cheers, mate. Cheers, bye bye. Well, what a game. What a game. Um, thank you for watching another old gold club. Uh, big match revisited. Plenty more to come from this. Hopefully, the technology will work properly as well. Who knows? Thank you, everybody. Speak <laughs> to you soon.